So I actually didn't recognize the weight gain um, or the functional freeze in myself. Um, for everyone joining, hi, we're just getting started. This is the um, Healthy Weight Loss Masterclass with me, and I'm going to go over some of your questions at the end, and we'll have a short presentation too. Um, and I'm going to show you guys some of my labs, actually, because I think it'll resonate with some of you guys, and it may give you some answers you've been looking for. And you should stay for the Q&A, even if you don't have a question, because you won't believe how similar yet so different all of us are. And I guarantee you that some people's questions are going to strike a chord with you and perhaps point you in the direction you need. We have a lot of people here who are wondering about the same type of issues. And you guys can all also please chat in the box with each other. If you have answers for someone who listed something in a chat, please converse and um, help out your neighbors. So that's that's really the beautiful thing is we teach each other. So, okay, when I was in functional freeze, I personally did not recognize it. And I treat people for this. And I, it makes you feel really dumb as a doctor when you don't recognize the exact thing you teach on to people. Can you imagine? So don't be so hard on yourself if you can't figure things out. Now, what functional freeze looks like, you guys, is something very specific. Um, and it looks like you're okay as long as everything goes normal in your day-to-day, -day, in your nine-to-five. You, you go the same route in your car. You maybe talk to the same people every day. You watch the same shows. Um, you, you know, honestly, you're, you're stuck in your rut. But the minute something happens that maybe turns your day around or throws you off your course or there's a stressor that happens, it's like you lose your cool. You can't stay calm. Your heart starts beating. You might have physical reactions to this. And that's called functional freeze. So I would just like, you know, do my workout for an hour. And then the other 23 hours, I would just pretty much lay around and wonder why I couldn't lose weight. And that's called functional freeze. And that means you can still do your work. You can still talk to your people. You can still do your stuff. But man, if anything throws you off that game, you cannot handle it. I couldn't handle it, you guys. And it, you can be irritable with people that you really don't want to be irritable with. You really start, oh, very familiar. Yeah, guys, this is so common. Do you know it's more common than flight or fight? It's more common. And that's actually when you push past flight or fight and your body's kind of like stuck in parasympathetic mode, but it's an emergency stuck. It's like, kind of like you've given up a little bit. And so I'm going to talk about that with you guys too, because I've been there. And what you guys know as a doc, it's not like I'm just treating you with stuff that I learned in school. I've been there. And I felt like you feel and not known how to lose weight. And it was a lot of puzzle pieces I had to figure out for myself. It doesn't mean it's going to be the exact recipe for you guys, but I'm going to try my best to point you in the right direction by troubleshooting all the root causes that might be there for inflammation. And there's a lot, right? They say root cause, the root cause of all disease is inflammation. And that's a very nuanced statement. Because inflammation is great in the very acute or short-term period when your body's in trouble and it needs to say, hey, turn this around, there's something wrong. But then it gets stuck in the on button and we get stuck with inflammation that makes us look puffy and not sexy at all. We don't feel sexy at all either. And so, and so what can we do to get our body back into normalcy and get pull all these different root causes that could be causing that said inflammation that's stuck, right? So I'm going to show, let me pull up. I have some notes I took for you guys here. So um, I'm going to pull up my chart here for you guys, and we'll talk about some things. And I'm just going to go over the very basics right now. And then um, as we move forward in the class, I will go over some of the labs I was talking about and also um, some of the solutions for you guys. Oh, let me turn this off, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So first and foremost, you guys are going to probably already be pretty, pretty seasoned in this here, but I want to start just in case we've forgotten, because sometimes there's some nice reminders and the foundations for why people can't lose weight. And um, we're going to go over all those. So first and foremost, adopt a balanced diet. Now, I'm sure you guys are eating as organic as you can, as clean as you can. Um, you know, you probably heard there's a lot of misinformation out there right now about what's the right diet and what foods you should or shouldn't be eating. And sometimes if people are stuck in flight or fight or functional freeze, that's too overwhelming. It's too overwhelming. There's way too much information out there. It's like, keep it simple for my nervous system. 
right? So you really want to make sure that you're, you can't be perfect. And I'm not asking you guys to be perfect. I'm asking you to do your best, which is very different. Okay. So, so what do we do about the diet here? I really want you guys to aim for fruits and vegetables. You know, here, what do I think about vegan? What do I think about carnivore? What do I think about keto and paleo and AIP and elemental and all those things? You know what? They serve a, a certain place in that acute time period when people are suffering. They may be right for your neighbor and not you, but overall, what is re health? It is resiliency. That means you shouldn't have to cut out full healthy food groups to stay stable. You know, carnivore is great if you're sick, but if all you can eat is meat and you can't incorporate any fruits and vegetables, huh, huh. you know what I mean? Like we want to be able, resiliency is health. You know what? If you can't go out and have some pizza every now and then, I'd like to fix that for you. Because I guarantee you, most of you guys out there aren't what you consider overweight or have too much inflammation because of your diet. Most of you guys probably eat too little, to be honest. You probably eat too little and you starve yourself. And you're really trying to figure it out, but through the food. And it's not the food, actually. And I teach this a lot. Food is only about 20% of health, but just to get it right, you want it, resiliency is being able to sometimes have a cheat meal and not suffer for two days. It's sometimes being able to go out to eat and you don't have a headache for the rest of the evening. You can still enjoy the evening with your friends. So I want to get you guys to that place where even if you have those meals, your body is resilient and that is health. It knows how to come back to homeostasis on its own. So what do I want your plate to look like? Oh, a restricted diet for six weeks. Yes, absolutely. It can reset the body can reset the body, but these are short-term fixes. Long-term, you want to be able to eat most everything and be okay if it's healthy. So fruits and vegetables. I love fruit. I could probably live on fruit, to be honest with you guys. Um, even if I'm sick, the one thing I want is fruit. And um, so please don't be afraid of fruit. I'm definitely not afraid of fruit or fruit sugar. Um, there's so many other things that are causing inflammation out in the world. It's God, God's natural dessert. I consider fruit. <laughs> so, so please enjoy some fruit sometimes. Um, and don't be scared about all the, the information out there when your body's resilient. It's okay. Um, and you really want to look for vitamins, minerals, fiber, which can help you feel fuller and whole grains. I still will say most people will do better, especially if you're chronically ill, if you're gluten-free. That doesn't mean everyone, right? I don't react when I eat gluten, but guess what? Over time, I do start to gain weight on it. It takes a while. Not everyone's the same. Some people react immediately. Some people, they have to have a few meals before they feel poorly. So, you know, it can build up in the gut. It depends on how quick your digestion is and how quickly you can absorb and assimilate and poop things out. So you want to choose whole grains over refined grains, things like brown rice. Be careful of arsenic that can be in around brown rice. You really want to wash your brown and white rice before cooking it. Quinoa. I really love quinoa. It's got lots of protein too. Um, oats, as long as they're organic, are great too and gluten-free. And they provide some natural minerals and nutrients and fiber. Um, so if you're chronically ill, please try and cut gluten or just give a trial and see how you feel. Um, for lean proteins, I love protein. You guys are going to see me talk about a lot about protein here. And I'll be honest with you, when I get up in the morning, it's the last thing I want to eat some mornings. It is the last thing. It does not sound appetizing to me in the morning. I'm going to be real with you guys. Like it's, it is a, it is a constant effort for me to try and get 30 grams of protein in the morning. Um, and so sometimes it's just easy for me to make a smoothie that tastes kind of fruity. <laughs> As you guys know, I already know I love fruit. <laughs> So it's really what you guys want. If you love eggs, fabulous. Um, if you don't react to eggs, they're not inflammatory for you, fabulous. Um, if you love, Ooh. if you love some fats with your eggs, get you some avocado. You know, um, all that stuff is really great. We just need to find where your protein lies and and what yeah. you like. So look for what you can do. But I try to say grass fed. It's really great if you know the farm and the farmer. Um, really pult pastured chicken raised in the grass, you know, not eating the feed, um, wild caught fish, if you can, they also have some really, really, um, 
they're starting to be more mindful. I wouldn't say farmed fish, but, you know, fish out on the pole in the ocean, things like that. They really try sometimes. So ask questions in restaurants about how they're treating things. Ask questions. Um, beans and legumes are great for some people, not everyone, some people, but it will help keep you full and satiated. And that's what protein does. Um, yeah. Healthy, healthy fats. You want to opt for unsaturated fats like nuts, nuts, seeds, avocados, olive oil. These really can help can control your hunger. And fats in general, especially if people have brain issues, we recommend sometimes the keto diet for the short term. And why is that? It's because the keto diet actually um, has healthy fats that help support brain function. And so we often recommend this diet for people who have neuro problems, brain problems, and seizures. Actually, high fats. And the thing that no matter who you are goes for every single person on this call is you have to be careful of alcohol. And okay, can you guys mute your iPhone? Sorry, I don't know whose phone is on. Um, but um, basically, you know, with alcohol, unfortunately, a lot of the studies that were done in the past were wrong. They used to say, oh, a little bit's good for your heart, thins your blood. And now studies are showing that all cause mortality increases with alcohol, any alcohol consumption. And what I think is happening is they've actually bastardized so much of the alcohol, just like they did the food. And so much it kind of comes from GMO corn, GMO grains. Um, and, you know, honestly, alcohol makes us push the healthy estrogen called um, 2-OH estrogen into the unhealthy type that leads to breast cancer called 4-OH estrogen. So you can't really talk about detox, menopause, and metabolism with a glass of wine in your hand is what I'm saying, unfortunately. And it pains me to say that guys, because I like a good glass of wine too. Let's just be real here. I, I'm not going to pull any punches with you guys. You came here for a webinar. I'm going to tell you the truth about me and I'm going to show you my labs. Sometimes I like a glass of wine and I make sure it's organic. But I know when I drink that organic wine, it's still not the best choice for me. It's still inflammatory. It still doesn't help menopausal symptoms. You want some hot flashes? Go have some wine and go to bed. <laughs> it's every time. You want some palpitations? Drink some sulfites and red wine. I mean, seriously, you guys. So we have to be really vigilant about what we're putting in our bodies, especially when it comes to alcohol. And it's just empty calories for the most part. I, I can remember, I'll call myself out here in my twenties and thirties. I thought it was really cool to go dance at clubs like four nights a week and drink, um, Captain Morgan's and diet Coke. <laughs> so embarrassed to say that right now, but that was my drink of choice. And then I would go bust my tail in the gym, like run interval training, lift weights four or five days a week and eat like chemical laden food that was like a light food. Like I thought Subway was healthy. I would go have Subway. <laughs> and I would be like, why am I so inflamed? Why are my socks pitting around my ankles when I take them off? Why? I couldn't figure it out back then. Now we all know that you can't eat like that and work out and think that you're not going to have inflammation when you're drinking. Okay. Portion control. This is something I also have to watch out for myself is overeating something that tastes good when you're really hungry. And you really want to be careful that your blood sugars aren't falling all over the place. Because for me, I like to, if I'm not careful, I like to get up in the morning and starve myself and finally have some coffee and then wait two more hours to eat. And then all of a sudden it hits you at once. And literally you're about to pass out like pass out because you have starved yourself all morning and then pushed off hunger with coffee. So that'll cause some problems with portion control. It also caused some problems with dipping of glucose and blood sugars. And that's really what causes um, insulin resistance and blood sugar problems is yo-yoing your diet all throughout the day and waiting till, you know, 11 to one to eat every day. And then you're going to eat late at night on top of that. The studies have shown that eating after 3 p.m. is really when you want to put on weight. If you want to lose weight, you're going to eat a lot in the morning up until 3 p.m. and then fast overnight. But most of us do the opposite. We fast overnight and into the morning. And then we yo-yo with our blood sugar sometimes. So just be careful of that, especially when you're in menopause. You may need a little more support. So in portion size, 30 grams of protein in the morning, you guys. If you don't do smoothie, it's about the size of your fist with eggs, poultry, a piece of meat, something like that. That's about 25 to 30 grams of protein that you want to aim for in the mornings. So portion sizes are really important and catching yourself 
um, stopping the, when you're, when you're actually full is really important to losing weight. So how do we stop this? Don't wait till you're starving because then you're just going to shovel food in your mouth. Wait till you're kind get, get kind of hungry. Stop your work, get out of your ADHD mode and go make yourself some food and take care of yourself. And then when you sit down, take a breath and a beat before you start eating, get, find some gratitude. And then when you put every bite in your mouth, you chew 20 to 30 times. Why is this important? Get your um, salivary juices get going when you chew. It tells your body you're preparing to digest. So actually those scissors, the enzymes that cut your food up are going to be there in preparation for your food. It's why your mouth waters when you're hungry and you smell something good. That's your digestive enzymes preparing to break down food for you. So chew each bite 20 to 30 times before you swallow. That helps your body break it down easier and it helps you get satiated and fuller sooner. When you're shoveling food, it takes about 20 minutes for that to register after you are done to feel full sometimes. So take your time when you're chewing and eating, and that will help with portion control problems. Stay hydrated, guys. I This is something that I also have trouble with. I have to literally carry this thing around with me and sometimes put electrolytes in it that I think tastes good. So I'll drink it. Sometimes you can put fruit in your water, but if, for me, sometimes I just won't drink regular water. You want to make sure you have a good filter. You're drinking good, clean water. It's structured even better. So, you know, I have an aqua true. It's a reverse osmosis filter. It does not structure my water, but when I move into my permanent house, I'll get a spring aqua, which will. I also add electrolytes to it. You can hold it next to your heart and structure it with love and gratitude. Actually, a lot of the studies are showing. So how much water? You really want to be sure you're drinking half your body weight in ounces of water. And so, you know, if you're active, eight cups of water, so a day. And um, that will help a lot because it's not just about being hydrated. Your kidneys love fluids. And so if we're really talking about drainage and getting rid of things in the body, you have to be hydrated to really flush that system of your lymph and your kidneys. So everything will stick, you know, and stagnation breeds disease. So be sure to, to be mindful about how hydrated you are. I Not to be, can you drink too much water? Some people can. There, I, Actually, there's a disease called polydipsia, but it's usually due to a brain injury that this happens. Um, so, so when you're mindful about it, you should be okay. It's usually a, a pathophysiology that happens with a brain injury. Um, I don't think I have to say this to you guys, but we'll say it. Avoid extreme diets. Um, any sort of extreme restrictions that promise rapid results, any sort of like skinny teas, anything like that. Um, you really are looking at maybe possible nutrient deficiencies. And if you're stuck in a flight, fight or freeze, one of the main things that we're going to talk about at the end is remineralization and how that helps ground your nervous system. And so doing extreme diets or extreme, extreme, extreme fasting, sometimes you have to be careful, you know, have a practitioner look over you, make sure that you're not at risk for nutrient deficiencies. Exercise regularly, you guys move your body. Like you heard me mention earlier, when I was stuck in freeze, I would still do my normal weight training. I would still, um, you know, sometimes do hot yoga, things like that, but I was not losing weight. And it was because I was in such freeze that the rest of the day I would come home and like, I don't know, watch a marathon of documentaries or whatever I was watching the docu series and just lay on the couch with my dog. And, um, you know, because I, I couldn't deal with life. I'd had so many traumatic things happen um, that I really didn't feel safe in my body or my environment sometimes. And, and so I really want to stress that even if you're working out, don't do a strenuous workout and then just lay around the rest of the day. What is shown to be more beneficial is actually being um, active throughout the day um, and rather than one hour long or 45, 30 minute exercise session. So, you know, taking the stairs rather than the elevator, going on walks with your dogs, um, really getting up from the desk and making sure that you're standing up and moving around rather than sitting with your lymphatic system all day. Um, and that will help stimulate bowel movements for you guys and thirst and hydration. So, so be sure to move your body throughout the day, not just one exercise session. Um, yeah. And I work from home too, McKenna. I certainly do. And I take my dog on two or three walks a day. 
Um, there's a lake about five minutes from my house that I'll take her to with a dog park and let her run and wear her out. And then I will take her around the dog park one or two times myself. Um, I really try to get out and do that. You know, I aim for like 10 to 12,000 steps a day. And really, you guys don't need cardio if you do that. Um, if you aim for walking and then just weight training three to four times a week, it can just be 20 or 30 minutes. It doesn't, I do a YouTube video, to be honest with you. I do nourish, move, love, or I do Heather Robertson on YouTube, and I'm going to do it after I get off here. And sometimes I'll just do straight strength, strength training with no, you know, metabolic conditioning or cardio in it at all, because I've done so much walking that day. Walking is the greatest exercise. You guys, you don't need hard cardio. Um, I love to do hot yoga. That's really strenuous, but you don't need it. So, you know, you, you can walking, jogging, jogging, cycling, swimming, all that's great. Um, strength training is key, especially in menopause. Please don't skip it. I applaud you if you've made a habit of that throughout your life. I have since my twenties and muscle is the organ of longevity. It is, it will, we've seen so many studies of the elderly that shows how they keep their function, their proprioception, their health late into their years because they have continued to strength train and condition their body. You don't have to do anything crazy. Okay. Just start. And that just means you can do it at home. I ordered a, a set of 10 pound, 15 pound and 20 pound weights. And that's what I do it at home all the time. You don't have to go to a gym. I know that can be intimidating for some of us women. Um, but try, I do at least 40 minutes of weight training a day. You can start with 20, you know, and, and do that you guys. And I think you'll see a huge difference in how that sculpts your body um, and maintains fat loss as well because muscle burns fat. So that's my little thing on, on weight training. It's changed my life. It prevents osteoporosis. It really is wonderful. You guys. Okay. One of the most important things I'm going to say to you guys here on this, on this free masterclass is get adequate sleep. And I know it's easy for me to say to some of you guys, it's easy to say that go to bed. You know, if you go to bed around nine or 10 o'clock, you actually show more benefit with the hours you're sleeping earlier than if you go to bed late and get the same amount of sleep. Now, sleeping is wonderful because it helps to detox the body. That's why when you're sick or sometimes after you guys eat, if you have poor digestion, you might get really sleepy. That's because, um, digestion takes about 60% of our energy. So sometimes if you eat a heavy meal, it makes you tired. If you're sick, your body wants to sleep because it can't produce energy and work on an immunity on immunity at the same time, very well together. Um, and so sleeping is where our brain drains It's called the glymphatic system and the glymphatic system, the brain drain, it drains right into the deep cervical lymph nodes here in the, of the lymphatic system. So they're connected. So a lot of times people who are complaining of cellulite or puffiness, all that, it can be hormonal in, in its origin as well. But a lot of times it's due to um, not sleeping well. And that backs up the whole entire lymphatic system and the glymphatic system for people. And that's really important because you don't want toxins in your brain, right? I mean, I have, my family, I have a family history of Alzheimer's and Lewy body's dementia. So it's really important for me to get really good sleep and take care of my gut health because of the gut brain axis. So if you guys have poor gut health, that's one of the first places I would look is your digestion as well as sleep. Um, your gut makes about 90% of the serotonin and serotonin and converts over to melatonin, which helps us sleep. So, so that's a really important clue for you guys. You really want to aim for seven to nine hours a night. And just because you're in bed doesn't mean you feel rested in the morning. If you don't feel rested in the morning, that's definitely one of the questions I ask my clients. And so it's really important for you guys to feel like you got those seven to nine hours of sleep. And if you didn't, that's one of the first places I would start is sleep. Okay. Managing stress. This is another one of the most important points I'm going to tell you guys. And you've already heard me talk about um, how stress actually ruins my nervous system. And I believe is the beginning to autoimmunity in general. Um, and so it's so underlooked in the Western medical model that I really want to stress it here for you guys. Um, I can't tell you the stuff that happened to me last year. Actually, I'm going to tell you a little bit of just the cliff notes um, of things that happened in the last seven years. So you know, I was first and foremost, um, 
shareholders came in and kind of wine and dined me years ago and stole my supplement company out from under me. When I told my audience, you guys about it, they sued me for three and a half years, hundreds of thousands of dollars later, I ended up just settling with them and not getting anything back. My license was taken. Well, I surrendered my medical license to the California Medical Board for doing vaccine exemptions for fragile children in California. That was a horrible, again, legal process that I had to go through. And then finally, my six year relationship um, ended last year um, and it was pretty toxic in general. I ne ne didn't really feel safe around the way he talked to me. And so I had a lot of things going on at the same time that helped to sort of, I mean, chip away at my nervous system over time. And then Last year, I'm going to say something crazy to you guys since you're on this, this master class. I actually had a black magic curse put on me that almost killed me. I was suicidal all last year and I was so stressed out that I finally got my labs done and they were, everything was in the red. Everything showed chronic stress in my labs. It was so bad, so bad that I ended up with an emotional traumatic brain injury because I was stripped of my B vitamins. B vitamins are needed to, for cognitive function. They cause neuropsychiatric symptoms when you don't have them. You need them to make hormones, neurotransmitters. And so lack of B vitamins, on top of the stress and the curse, actually called an emotion, caused an emotional traumatic brain injury in me that caused me to go to a brain clinic last year for a week. And so since everything is broken now, I've come back to myself. I, my, my relationship has ended. It was very traumatic, um, but I've lost 30 pounds. And so I had to go through that experience so I could tell you guys that if you're in something anything stressful in your life that you are continuing because you're used to it because it's easy because it's just that way I really want you to rethink those relationships and that situation you're in and that environment that may, you don't feel safe in but it's better than maybe it's better than being single that's what I told myself a stupid line it's better I don't want to start over so I'm just going to destroy my health in the process. <laughs> I mean, really, that's what happened to me. So any sort of work environment, relationship environment, friends, whatever it is, you guys, I ate an entire bag of Siete chips every other night and couldn't figure out what's wrong, laying on the couch, stressed out, not feeling safe and beating myself up. You know what I mean? So, so it's, it's hard. You guys don't beat yourself up. Like I did. Don't do what I did. And you know, you're going to have that emotional eating when you don't feel safe. Guess what? I didn't have minerals. I didn't have B vitamins. So, you know, the cravings I had salt, give me all the salt for tries and bags of chips. And I couldn't understand what was wrong with me. I was like, do I have parasites? Do I have, do I have bacteria? What's wrong with me? No, I had mineral deficiencies and I had trauma and I had stress that was untreated. And so I'm, I, I'm not telling you guys my, so thank you. You guys are so sweet in the chat. I'm only telling you because I know some people out there are going through something similar to what I went through. And I want you to know that like, you can come out of this and change your, your life. And if there's someone out there that you love and you don't feel loved back, that's important. That's important for your heart. And that's important for your inflammation in your body. So it's not supposed to be like that. Okay. That's what I, that's all I'm sharing with you guys, because I've, I've been there and there's no judgment because I couldn't figure it out. Okay. Rings, tears, my eyes. So ditch your toxic relationships, guys, your emotional and your social environment is significantly influences your overall well being more so than I thought as a physician in functional root cause medicine. Okay, so I have to look you guys straight in the eyes and 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 tell you that that stress ruined my life, and I let some of it happen because I didn't know that there was another way. I didn't feel I felt so unsafe. I couldn't even make decisions. So I, I want you guys to understand that that's where a lot of autoimmunity and a lot of off kilter in the body comes from. Are those negative thoughts and that stress where you feel like you're walking on eggshells every day and there's neurotransmitters like adrenaline and cortisol and hormones that are being released in a certain rut and a pattern every day. And that's why a lot of us can't lose weight. Oh, thanks, Erin. Thanks for not making me feel crazy. <laughs> She's like, where did you find out you had a curse? Um, sometimes I will dabble with a couple of people who have been very instrumental in my life. Um, who many of you guys would call energy workers. I call it 
intuitive people who can tune into a channel that I don't have the station to yet. Um, and so I was downing minerals every day. I called one of my friends who runs um, an energy workers collective and I was bawling. And I said, I want to drive my car off a cliff. And it wasn't me. And she could hear it. She's what I scared her. And so she called her friend, Glenda Emery. And Glenda is the one who told me. And within a week when it was broken, I was back to myself. I didn't want to die anymore. So, so that's, that's why. And so if, and honestly, the curse had been building on me for a few years. It was a special mentor who put it on me. And I'll just drive this point home with you guys to let you know um, that I was told at the time when it was broken that in six months she would have cancer because it's a, this curse was meant to kill me. And um, she had cancer six months later, leiomyosarcoma. And the day I moved from Asheville to Florida is the day later I found out that she died. So you can't make this up. I mean, it's scary. So stress, you guys, I can't tell you if you don't feel safe in your body and your environment, you can't heal. You have to feel safe and you can't heal in a body you hate. God made you, the universe, whatever you believe. I don't want to offend anyone. Whatever you believe in, God made you perfect. And it's the environment that signals our genes. The environment and things you've been through that is piled up in your toxin bucket, toxins and trauma. And how do we unravel that for each of you? Okay, these are the steps. It's very simple, but it's, it's hard to see ourselves. Okay, so recognize relationships that are constantly negative. They're draining. They're detrimental to your mental and emotional health. This can impl include people who undermine your goals. They engage in manipulative or passive aggressive behavior. They contribute to stress. Maybe they don't hear you out. Maybe you're with an anxious or, or dismissive avoidant personality. And anytime you bring up your thoughts, they go, I don't have time for this. I can't hear this because their nervous system's dysregulated in a, in a different way. And then you guys are just working out childhood trauma on each other. You know what I mean? We got to change that somehow for you. You have to set boundaries. And that was part of my problem was I didn't set boundaries. You have to establish clear boundaries of people who negatively impact your well-being. And some of us people, people pleasers, it's very hard to do that. It's very hard. Yes, thank you guys for your support. Um, for people who are wondering why a spiritual guru would do that to me, where do you think the pedophiles hide in the Catholic churches and churches in general and, um, you know, PD, in, in child care offices? It's the same thing with spiritual mentors. They hide in courses and personal self-work places and things like that, right? Okay, so... Um, Setting boundaries and these people come into your life that are difficult sometimes for people pleasers. So you learn how to set boundaries. That's sometimes why that happens to you because you, we all believe in the scripture that says treat others as you would like to be treated. But then we forgot about the latter part. We don't treat ourselves well. We sometimes treat others and give and give and give and don't do that for ourselves. So that's where the work is. That's where the shadow work is for you guys. That's what helps you. You need to seek support if you need it. Surround yourself with positive people. Maybe it's just one or two. You have your people. Encourage your goals. They believe in you. They love you. You know it. There's no doubt in your mind. Those people. Surround yourself with those people. And prioritize self-care for yourself. You know, engage in, in activities that you used to love when you were younger. Maybe you need to go back to that girl or that guy. The young version of yourself. And what made you happy? Made your heart sing. Maybe that's, you know, nurturing your emotional mental health and hobbies or therapy or spending time with loved ones or whatever it is that that, that you love and you make time to play and then if none of that works you need to consider professional help you know I ended up finding my root cause answer because I dug and dug and dug and I I had the luxury because unfortunately I don't have a family, but I have the luxury of going to different clinics and trying out different biohacks and getting to the root cause um, because I don't have to pay for a family. So I understand we all are living within our means, but I want you to know the one thing you have is hope and you can't give up hope ever. Can't give up hope. Even doctors know people in the hospital, even 
conventional doctors know that people do the best and beat cancers and all that, they have hope. Don't ever give up hope, guys, because you are made from, from God's image. You are a beautiful soul, each one of you. You deserve the best. So you have to give yourself that. So if that doesn't know that works, please seek professional help. Navigating toxic relationships feel really overwhelming and you don't know the right answer. So you need sometimes a, a guidance, guidance counselor, a therapist, anyone who can help. And then finally, I want to show you guys my labs really quick. Um, and I think that you'll like it because they're, when I got these labs, I saw Dr. Christine Schaffner in Seattle back last November. You'll see these labs are from November last year. These are the first labs I got, which started to diagnose why I couldn't lose weight and had so much inflammation. And now because of that, I always, whatever works for me, I tell everyone and I put it up on wellness plus the, the wellness plus essentials blood work panel. And it's the blood work that I got from Dr. Christine Schaffner, because I thought if this diagnosed me and helped me so much, I need to help do it with everyone else. So now you can order labs without a doctor showing my abs, showing you guys my abs right now. No, um, labs, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's the thing is, um, I wanted to offer this to everyone because if it helped me, I figured, gosh, there's somebody out there who can't get labs from their doctor and we offer them without a doctor on Wallace Plus. So you can kind of help figure your things out that doctors won't order for you. Okay. So let me show you guys this. Can you guys see that? Can you guys see my screen? Okay. It's kind of scary. Here's my blood labs collected November 23, as you can see. Um, and these were the first blood labs um, I had done. And I want you to look at everything in the red. It's actually quite scary. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can get the original report. Whoops, that didn't work out. Um, okay, I'll just do it. do this. I was hoping there would be a different way to look at it. But you can see I'm fasting. I think I may have had a bite of something that morning, but I was fasting here. High blood sugars are obviously a sign of high cortisol sometimes and stress. And then you'll go on to see how many abnormals I have here. So my hemoglobin is high. My MCH, my mean corpuscular hemoglobin is high. My um, creatinine is high. I'm a little dehydrated here. As you'll see, my homocysteine is high. A need for B vitamins. MCHC, MCH is high. Need for B vitamins. Low RDW, need for B vitamins. Red cell distribution with. You see my ferritin's low. Guess what you need? What makes iron and ferritin? B vitamins, vitamin C. I mean, B12. Look, it says my B12 is normal, but don't I need B12? Here's a teaching point for you guys here. The serum B12s are wrong. They're always wrong. Every time. Don't even bother with it. This will throw people off and some doctors. This, what this meant is my body was so inflamed. I had it out in the serum. I wasn't able to absorb it properly and assimilate it. The way to check properly for B12 is a urine methylmalonic acid or MMA. And that is the shows whether you're absorbing and peeing out B12. But this one, look, it says it's normal. And it, it was not normal. <sighs> so my iron is normal. But my ferritin, which is a storage of iron, was not normal. You can see, let's see here, total protein was, as I was dehydrated. So you can see the protein in my blood's a little higher. <clears throat> my liver enzymes, even from stress, are high. And you can see all this. My MPV is high. My MCV is high. Um, my lymphocyte and white blood cell count. I mean, all this is off. What does this show? This is full of inflammation. This panel is full of inflammation. It even showed my liver enzymes. It showed in my um, cholesterol panel at one point. My um, LDL was 130. That's, this is inflammation. This is a lack of minerals and B vitamins. And this is inflammation. This is what you're seeing in my labs right here. I mean, I about fell out of my chair. I've never had anything in the yellow or red before. This happened over a year of stress. A year. I fixed these in th in in uh, three weeks. These labs. I fixed them in three weeks. They weren't perfect. Some of them were on a trending downward in the yellow instead of the red, but you can tell it was everything was improving. And so this is a mess. I mean, this is actually these were not. So before my, I even had a, some labs where my HS uh, my CRP was eight. Eight you guys. So I've definitely had my fair share of not understanding what was wrong with my body recently. 
And, you know, when I have a homocysteine of 13 and a CRP of eight and all my CBC and blood level panels are, um, oh, are you guys having trouble hearing me? Anybody? Okay, good. Um, so when you see all that, that is the level of inflammation. And I felt inflamed in my brain. I felt pulled in a million different directions. I felt crazy and I was super irritable. So it, it did show also in my behavior as well. And if that resonates with you guys, um, I had leaky gut. That means leaky brain. You have one, you have the other. You know, I had a traumatic brain injury that caused leaky gut in me. Caused a, a high cortisol, causes weight grain around the midsection. Cortisol is a great hormone in acute stressful situations. Long-term cortisol, the worst hormone will wreck your body. So I'm pounding stress for you guys. And so finally, if you guys are looking for labs, you can get those on Wellness Plus. You can get the essentials panel and look at all those different labs I just showed you as well. We do a full thyroid panel as well, um, a full iron panel, and then those inflammatory labs that we're looking at, as well as the hemoglobin A1C to look for your three-month blood sugar level. So I tried to include everything in there for you guys. And then finally, we want to go back to the protein. If you guys um, are looking for a protein powder, I love Equip. They make prime protein um, and it is amazing. What I do, because it does use raw stevia, that's too sweet for someone, some people, is to use the unflavored. And so I'll do a scoop of the unflavored and a scoop of the vanilla. And then I'll make like an orange cream sickle with like mangoes, pineapples, um, sometimes I'll use a little pineapple juice or mock and then, um, a scoop of the vanilla, a scoop of the unflavored, and it tastes like an orange cream sickle. Um, and so that's how I get around any, anything that's too sweet for stevia. But in general, that's a great source of protein for me. Two scoops gives me 40 grams. And then I'm able to, um, get half, you know, not half, but a third of my, um, a lot of my, um, ideal protein needs, which is one gram of protein per ideal body weight. You guys, that's what you want to look for. <clears throat> All right. So protocol, protocol for weight loss, guys, are you ready? I'm going to give it to you right here. Minerals. Okay. If you feel, if there's anything I said about fight, fight or freeze, you were like, yo, that's me. <laughs> I resonate strongly with that statement. Then you guys are going to need some minerals. <clears throat> Now you can do trace minerals hair test. You can do HGMA test if you want. I can look at that blood work and say, oh my gosh, my own blood work and say, I needed minerals. I needed vitamin C. I needed B vitamins. I needed like magnesium. I needed all that stuff. So what did I do when I knew my gut couldn't absorb because I had leaky gut? I went and I got vitamin IVs. I went and I got Myers cocktail with a glutathione push, which is all the B vitamins, methylated B vitamins, vitamin C selenium, magnesium, and then they do a glutathione push at the end. And that way I guaranteed that I got all the minerals and vitamins I needed because I didn't trust my gut to absorb it because I was eating meat, which was where you get B vitamins from food. And my B vitamins were in the toilet. As you could see, it didn't matter because stress and inflammation prevented me from absorbing and assimilating the, my vitamins and minerals that I needed for my food. That's how much stress hurts you. Okay. I use myself as an example here. Minerals. <clears throat> there are a few I like. I love Nano Glute B. It's my own product. I made my methylated B product with vitamin C and glutathione because of myself. Oh, I got a I got vitamin IVs probably every three weeks for two months. I got maybe like four of them, I guess. I got more than that. Yeah, four of them probably. So Nano Glute B at aegisformulas.com. Methylated B vitamins, vitamin C, glutathione. Why do I love this one? I love this one because you can titrate it. You don't, four dropper fulls in the mouth held under 30 seconds. You absorb 100% of this through the buccal cavity of the mouth. So you don't have to, I don't have to worry about going to get IVs anymore because I can absorb 100% of this. I just hold it in my mouth. Before, if I took a B vitamin capsule, I had to wait for the gut to digest it, hydrochloric acid to break it up. And hopefully I got some bioavailable amount of it. So that's why I created this. The other thing I needed and what is on deck for Aegis formulas actually is a mineral supplement. Now that has B vitamins, glutathione and vitamin C, but guess what? I needed lots of other minerals to ground my crazy nervous system. I needed 
vitamin E, K2, folate, boron, chromium, cobalt, copper, iodine, magnesium, manganese, molybdenum, selenium, and zinc. So this is, I have no affiliation with this pro, this product. This is Kylum Minerals or Kylum Elements, excuse me, kylumelements.com is the name of it. Um, and I'll put that in there because I don't know if Deb knows it or not. Dot com. So, and I got the Divine E product. It's for women. It fixed my hot flashes and night sweats in four doses and grounded my nervous system. Now, this has changed how I, I now practice with people because I'm seeing women with a lot of histamine and mast cell. Hey guys, that's nervous system dysregulation. That's living in mold, which gets your nervous system and nervous system dysregulation. And so I'm starting with grounding every single person with minerals now who comes to me in flight, fight, or freeze or has histamine or um, mast cell activation. Um, and so I remineralize people. That's the addition part. That's the first step if you're stressed out, guys. Remineralize yourself. Um, Nano Glute B or Kylam are great options. You could do an HTMA or trace minerals hair test if you want to know exactly what minerals you're lacking or have too much of. Next up is drainage. Usually you would see me say drainage first, not today. I'm going to say remineralize now. Next up is drainage, all pathways, women, that's your cycles to breast milk as well, sweat, bowels, lymph, lymphatic system, liver, bile, and mitochondria or cellular. So I don't want to drain you guys and give you a bunch of biohacks like sweating and enemas and, you know, all that stuff, binders, all that stuff until I know that your mineral status is good and your nervous system is grounded or nothing will stick. So we do that very well in Wellness Plus. We are a drainage specialist over there. So once you're remineralized, the next step is drainage. After that, you screen for roadblocks. roadblocks. Now, why would I say, why don't you screen for roadblocks first and then do drainage? Because roadblocks are things like breast implants and root canals. Before I have you guys go under the knife and rip some things out, let's try and drain you first. It's a little easier and see if you could feel better and come back to yourself. If you don't, then we screen for roadblocks. So I just mentioned a couple infected root canals that can be silent, but are over 10 to 15 years old. You need a 3D cone beam scan, okay? From a biological or holistic dentist that's used to reading them. Then you will, um, then you will need if any breast implants, 10 to 15 years on those two. Not a lot of man-made objects outlive our wonderful bodies. So, um, and then mold in the home. That is another roadblock. It doesn't mean we're going to detox mold just yet. It means we need to avoid the root cause, which is um, sometimes water damage in the home. Those are the roadblocks for the most part. And nervous system is one of those as well, because most people don't think that's going to be a problem. And it often is. And then finally, if you still need it is detox. And lots of people, when they ground their nervous system properly and they drain properly, sometimes they don't need a detox. Can you guys imagine? So I love Gut Hero for that. I love Biocide and LSF. I love different types of binders. I love Nuvita's binder, the cellular detox. I love um, um, lots of different binders, actually. There's lots of different binders you can do. Pectin is a great one. Pactosol is a great one. Um, bi uh, Biotoxin binder, a great binder, um, as long as you don't re react to fulvics. Um, and... Even ozone and antibiotics can be a killing type of phase for people. So people have healing detox reactions from ozone and antibiotics. So I recommend people even to drain and do this process, even if you're going to get ozone, which is a killer in itself. Okay. So, so those are, those are kind of the steps I would say for you guys. Um, and if you haven't done minerals in a while and you've been doing sauna or killbind sweat, let's replace your minerals and see how you do. This is the first step I'm starting to do now. Um, oh, titrate, sorry, go up higher. Sorry about that. Yeah. You could do what you can. Like sometimes on nano glute B, I'll say people start with two dropper folds and titrate or go up slowly to the four dropper folds. Yeah. So, so that's why I say, you know, guys, don't skip the nervous system. A lot of people do that. I used to do that early on in my career. And what that means is you have to detox longer, spend pe more people's money. And um, sometimes the protocols don't work as well. And we want our things to work well for people. So if you help people's nervous system get back in homeostasis, it'll be a big deal for them. And then finally, seek support if you guys need it. Seek accountability if you need it from your friends and family. Um, and then consult a professional. 
if you want, we have um, on Wellness Plus one-on-one -on -one consults. You can see Deb, you can see Dr. Rinfer, you can see me now, actually, if you're on a Wellness Plus member, we have a consult page on one-on-one -on -one health where you can book a discovery call with my team or with Deb or Dr. Rinfer. All of them are, I've been, are trained the same way and they're amazing, amazing people. So guys, losing weight the healthy way is about making gradual, sustainable changes to your lifestyle, focus on balanced nutrition, stress management, regular exercise, sleep, high protein needs, um, and really remineralizing drainage and then detox. Don't forget toxic relationships put a big kind of kicker in things too. So you really want to um, be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. I was scared to leave my ex. I thought I was too old to meet anyone else. And I thought this is as good as it gets. And I put up with a lot of stuff and I lost my boundaries because of it. Don't be like me. <laughs> Don't be like me. So um, I am going to open the floor to questions now. If you guys have questions and you would like to raise your hand, what you would do, I'm going to just answer you know, whatever questions you guys have, we'll try and just keep a couple minutes on everyone so that we can answer more than one question for people or, you know, on here. So if you guys go to um, the react, it's a little, little sideways heart there. And you can see it says sin with effect reactions and then raise hand. So if you guys want to raise your hand right there, um, and if you have a phone, you may not be able to find this as easily. There we go. Olympia. Hi. Hi, thank you so much for sharing everything you've shared. Sure. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little emotional because okay. I have a very sick daughter um, who is currently on prednisone and doctors are talking about biologics and, you know, potentially surgery. And I know that she had parasites a few months ago, which they haven't been able to seem to test for we actually captured like um photos of what we found in her stool they think i'm crazy and kooky and a lunatic yeah um yeah. and we also did live in a place with mold so she's totally inflamed on prednisone now and you know it's a very scary thing mm -hmm. um i'm sure she's lacking vitamins and minerals for sure um i did order the nano glute for her I just don't know if it can be taken with, you know, prednisone. Yeah. Meds. There shouldn't be a problem um, with prednisone. What's that? There should not be a problem with prednisone. Okay. There should um, not. Um, and just go make sure they're, how old is she? 18. 18. Okay. Any recent traumas, emotional traumas or anything? Um. I think she's always had like anxiety and just fear like of like vomiting and just fear of many things. Um, but like, I don't know what it is about vomiting, but she's always had this fear. And so she was like always asking, can I eat this with this? Can I eat this with that? Um, you know, and she used to have like anxiety about things happening in the world. Um, so just a lot, of, a lot of anxiety and I'm not sure where exactly that all stemmed from. I'm telling you the anxiety, it causes a tear in the etheric body and moves to the physical body. And it's the anxiety that dysregulates the immune system, um, and is the cause, um, for whatever reason, the, the, the fear or the anxiety is coming is the cause of a lot of, um, autoimmune symptoms. For people. Mm -hmm. Um, so what you're saying, it makes a lot of sense to me, um, based on how she's presenting now, actually. Um here, I'll show you really quick. Just to drop Yeah, back. she's she's actually in the hospital as we speak, bleeding. She's lost mm. you know, like 10 pounds over a couple weeks. Um Man. and I want to get tests done, I just don't know where to start and um, is, she, I know is it her gut? It's her, is she got dealing with ulcerative colitis or Crohn's or something? Ulcerative. Yeah. Ulcerative yeah. colitis. Okay. Yeah. So I would definitely get a gut zoomer by Viber. Gut a gut okay. zoomer. It's a functional gut test. It's going to show you the types and species of bacteria that are the culprits here or parasites. They don't test for every parasite and they can miss things. That's the one thing it'll miss more than anything is a parasite on these gut functional gut tests. But okay. they are going to test about 20 of them. 
So okay. big ones. So we'll see. What I wanted to show you here is everything the vagus nerve does in the body. So you can see it helps you swallow. It helps you taste gag reflex and coughing, swallowing decreases or increases vascular tone. So it's responsible for blood pressure, inflammation, uh -huh. inflammation, inflammation. It decreases heart rate. So when people have POTS or palpitations, it's often the vagus nerve increases, uh -huh. gas, decreases gut motility, stomach acid for the gut, and even regulates different hormones being released from the liver. So you can see here, uh, this one can't heal if you're not in flight or fight guys. And this is uh -huh. what I want to really show you. Okay. So this is normal. This is awake, asleep, awake, asleep, sympathetic, parasympathetic, right? So you can see this is when people are in ventral vagal tone. This is where you're in parasympathetic mode, even with sympathetic mode, you feel in the present joy, curiosity. You can make decisions. You can see everything. Digestion increases here, Incre intestinal motility, immune response is good, decreases defensive responsive. When we go into sympathetic, we get irritated, angry, worry. Um, all I can, we're still like, driving, going, 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 getting things done, but we're maybe a little more irritable. You can see changes start to happen. Blood pressure, heart rate, fuel, adrenaline, oxygen, all the things change. People size even changes. And as we move into dorsal freeze, it moves into, I can't, can't make decisions, indecisive, depression, you're numb, dissociated, scrolling all the time, not wanting to talk to anybody, shut down. And you can see what happens. It's parasympathetic, but it's an emergency state. Fuel storage and insulin activity start to go down. So you can't utilize fuel. You can't assimilate vitamins. Your insulin and blood sugars get dysregulated. Your endorphins, the feel-good chemicals go down. Your heart rate decreases. Your blood pressure, your temperature, you're cold all the time. Your facial expressions are different. Your eye contact. This is so spot on, my daughter, 100%. This is where you need to focus. This. If you can get to the root cause of this and calm her down, she'll be a new person. Okay. Okay. It's our okay. fight or flight response. And we're going to treat it from the gut. Okay. Um, but remember these two are connected. So she has a lot of control right here too. And what would you recommend working with like a therapist or taking her to a brain clinic? Like how, how do you mm -hmm. work on this? You know, since she has a label now, unfortunately, I think I would take, I would have a guide with her. Um, okay. to help her with this and someone who is very skilled in autoimmunity and gut health because it's her gut it's her leaky gut leaky brain that's causing this okay 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 yeah start Thank there you. and go after that and then you'll treat the pathogens as a secondary response but I think if you can get her out of flight or fight the pathogens won't be her body is only hospitable because of the fight or fight state okay Okay. So while she's still on the prednisone, I can use the nano glute, give her supplements, IV vitamin IVs, work on the um, fight or flight nervous system. Yes. You got That's it. That's totally fine. You okay. got it. Wonderful. That's it. Thank you so, so much. Good luck, Olympia. Really Absolutely. You. Yeah. yeah. Olympia, I just dropped the link for the gut zoomer that Dr. Jess was talking about in the chat. So you have that. Awesome. Thank I appreciate you, it. Thank you. Oh, one last question. When you order a lab test, do you guys help with um, analyzing that test? Is there like a report that kind of gives you some information? There is a report that comes out. The gut zoomer is one of the more hard to understand tests because every single bacteria groups them into ranges of like this back, these bacteria are closely related to type two diabetes. These are closely related to neuro conditions. So it can kind of be a little overwhelming, but you can definitely book a one-on-one -on -one consult with me, with Deb, with Rimsler, awesome. and we're happy to help you anytime. Um, okay. And I am starting filming. I keep saying this, but I get so busy every day. I am starting filming the new wellness plus. So we're revamping the whole protocol with the remineralized drainage detox. I just talked to you guys about and we'd be doing two to five minute videos for people. Okay. So it's much more digestible. Um, and we, we, everything is going to change. We're going to have all that. Um, and I will be ha going over those tests and how to read them. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I You're really welcome. appreciate your time and all of your advice. Of course. Anyone else have any questions for me? All right. Let's see here. Uh, where did, oh, is it Amy or uh, me? It's Amy. Amy. Hi. <laughs> hi, Dr. Jess. So, um, I just wondering, have you delved into any 
peptides at all? If so, um, any that stood out to you at all? You know, I really, I don't do any in injectables, although I was really against them when they came out. I, Dr. Tina Moore is one of my friends and colleagues, and she has really exploded with her health information on um, GLP ones. And so I, I definitely think that she with some of her studies and research and using them in, in clients and patients, which I don't, you know, I listen to the experts. So the problem with a lot of the peptides is that they have been around forever, but the people use sometimes the wrong dosages. And so, um, I love like, for example, GHK copper, I take it orally and I put it topically on my skin. I love it. It's for, it's wonderful for the skin. It's done wonders for my skin, but when you, that's a different type of peptide than like a GLP one, like Wagovi or Ozempic or one of those. And what people are doing is getting gastroparesis, which is where the food doesn't move peristalsis and the food doesn't move through properly in the gut. It sits there like an anvil. So people get sick or they get, um, you know, really sometimes bad side effects. So what Dr. Tina taught me was that they're on like 15 or 20 milligrams. And that's really too high. And that's why they're having these horrible side effects. So she talks about microdosing with people a lot. Four milligrams here, three, three to five milligrams. And according to Dr. Tina, she says that it makes remarkable results for people. And so I'm not bashing them anymore, although I'm cautious with them. You know, Ozempic and Wagovi are new medications. Peptides in general are not, but they are. And so you have to be careful and you have to sort of, um, take everything with a grain of salt. Um, I don't think it's a horrible choice for someone who's done all the advice that I've given here and they are still stuck. Sometimes our metabolism is so stuck in a rut. It's hard to pull it out without the help. And I don't want anyone who's really trying to lose weight and has done all the right things to feel hopeless. And to um, say there's no way out and to have be a risk for diabetes. Because guess what? I'd much rather have you on that medication than have you be long-term diabetic or have a heart attack, you know? And so you have to take everything with a nuanced grain of salt um, answer. And so that's my, that's what I want to tell you guys. I don't bash them anymore, but just be aware and just know yourself. If you've tried everything else and you feel like I can't, I've done all the right things. Don't beat yourself up and just be smart about it and start very low and slow and don't go really high. And, um, you know, according to Dr. Tina, those side effects are much more nuanced when you do that. I hope Thank, that you, Dr. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Jess. Of course. I hope that helps. <laughs> Hi, Emma. Hello. Hi. Dr. Hi. Hi. Thank you for this. It was all very um, informative, but my question, I'm the one that has the seizures. So, yes. um, Oh, I know you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Your hair so, is darker. I, I know. So <laughs> I'm, I moved into this new house. I tested it with environ biomics and it was fine. And I'm on, I also see a neurologist and I'm on seizure meds. I'm at the full dose and still having seizures. You're still having breakthrough seizures. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all in my sleep. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, and then I wake up and it's like the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. And I like start throwing up for an entire day, migraine, cluster headaches. Yeah. Um, but my surge labs ever since moving in here have shot back up. So I just sent out another test hmm. to test again. I haven't had any damage or anything, but my SIRS labs show that I've been re-exposed. So interesting. Are you talking about like a, like, um, an MSH and a TGF beta one? Yeah. Okay. That kind of stuff. The blood labs. Yeah. The blood okay. labs. Okay. Um, so I just feel defeated. It's like one thing after another, I've moved like three times now trying to get out of mold and then it just gets re-exposed. So you haven't been anywhere else, just the house, right? You haven't been on vacation. You haven't been to like work, school, anything like that. No. And I work from home. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just checking. That's interesting. You took it. It was an EnviroBioMix lab. Yeah. What was the ERMI score? Um, 
originally. Like when you first tested the house you're in now. Yeah. Oh gosh. I mean, there was, I can't, remember, I'd have to look. There was some acromancia. Okay. I mean, not acromancia. Uh, what's the, oh, I'm blanking on acromancia is the gut bacteria. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Aspergillus. I, no, aspergillus was fine. Oh, hmm. oh man. It's, oh, actinomycetes? Acti yeah, actinomycetes. Oh, Actino. And, and I know I'm sensitive to that. There, there was some, but um, it was enough. Like, I mean, I have someone come once a week and scrub down my walls, deep clean. I vacuum my sheets every night. Like, I don't wear shoes in the house. And still, something. Yeah, I would love to see your army, even Deb. Deb is, for you guys who don't know, Deb is really a mold specialist. Her husband is a building biologist. So we, we they are a wealth of knowledge when it comes to EMFs, dirty electricity, water damaged homes, the way homes should be built and flow. So Uh-huh. she's actually, sometimes I will, I will, I will often curbside Deb and her husband Kit because of their background. So Do you have any, Deb, do you, I have more questions besides that. I also want to see the army. Yeah. Are you, did you replace your bed when you moved? Yes. Yeah. I, I threw everything away and completely Okay. stripped What kind of bed do you have? If you don't mind my asking, is it just like a traditional mattress or using a sleep number? it. Um, it's no, it's an organic one. It's Okay. similar to like an avocado. I don't remember the brand name, but it is an Okay. organic. Are you in an apartment or a condo or a house? I'm in a house. Okay. Um, the wall behind your bed, is that an outside wall or an interior wall? It's an interior wall. Okay. What's on the other side of that wall? Is it the refrigerator, the stove, entertainment Um, center? let's see. Might be the bathroom. Okay. I think the bathroom and the garage, maybe. Okay. Um, so if it's the garage, I would be really curious to see what's going on with your water heater. And if your HVAC system is in the garage, um, if it's the bathroom, I would say get somebody to check the bathroom and make sure there's not some kind of a hidden mold issue behind the wall. Um, and then if it's something else, like I said, just keep assessing what's there. Um, consider unplugging everything on the same wall that your bed sits on, just in case you're having any EMF issues cropping up too. But for me, when I hear somebody's having a problem that's worse at night, that that's the first stuff that I look at Okay. because it's a huge contributor for a lot of people. Um, all that being said, there's also a chance that your body's starting to release more just because you're in a cleaner space. Okay. I know that's what happened with me. I don't know if Dr. Jess, if you remember when I showed you my labs the first time before I told you they were mine, you panicked Yes. because they were so bad. Yes. But it was, we had just moved out of a very moldy house that we were renting. So obviously I couldn't do a whole lot to remediate it. And as soon as we moved out, my body just started clearing stuff like crazy before I even started my protocol. Mm, And it was just because my body finally felt safe enough to heal. Yeah. Would would surge markers though go up unless you were exposed? Well, those blood markers can go up for a number of different reasons too. Like I've seen parasites raise those blood markers as well. So, you know, like TGF beta is a marker for inflammation, right? Mm -hmm. So it can go up from mold and things as well too, not just mold. Um, and actinomycetes is actually gram negative or gram positive bacteria. It's not even mold. It's a bacteria. Yeah. Like a soil based bacteria that causes a lot of problems for people. So do you feel safe? Emma, do you feel? I, th I think so. I mean, I, I mean, now that I have to, they've now, since I had the most recent seizure, like a week ago, they took away my license. So, uh, I, That's fun. yeah, so that's unfortunate. And I, I still drive like a places that are cl like very close, but I've never been an anxious person and I get a little anxious You driving seem now. super cool and calm to me, but I don't, you know, you're definitely someone I would advise to look into the Kyla minerals just in case with the breakthrough seizures, it could definitely be something like a, a mineral deficiency um, and just go slow and slow and see how you do. Um, the other thing is definitely EMF. I know dad mentioned that too. EMF 
absolutely. Um, when you think about it being a, a frequency and the brain and the heart pr produce frequencies and energy that definitely can interfere with the proper frequencies in the brain too. So I know, you know, all this stuff, um, but do you, do you do EMF mitigation at all? I mean, I try and keep my phone and all that away from me and turn it off at night, but no, I could be a lot better. That's for sure. Yeah. So I can, I'm going to take a look at that next. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, keep me posted because I, I really, if that plays tested negative, I mean, I would love to see the ERMI, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to post it in the forum for us on wellness plus, we, I would love to see it. Um, and I'm sure Deb would too. You can tag us and just okay. let us kind of check it out because sometimes what happens on these RMEs is that the, you know, the total sum of the score, the log is, um, a good score, but Deb and I will look and there'll be like one specific mold species or bacteria species. That's like off the chart. Um, and it's not red because it's add up and subtract subtracted from the two rows. So it looks like the number, the salt total, sum of the numbers looks good, but that one species is causing a problem. Does okay. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thanks y'all. Good luck, Emma. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. There's a number with an iPhone that starts with 801, but it doesn't have a name on here. So you've got your hand up. It's your turn. That's me. Hi. How are you, Dr. Jess? What's your name? Kelly. Kelly. Yes. I'm good. How are you, Kelly? I'm good. Good. I just had some questions. So I've been seeing a functional medicine practitioner. So as a nurse practitioner for the last couple of years, I had to switch because I had asked for some labs and that practitioner and I didn't see eye to eye. So I switched and I'm seeing a different one now, but I'm still, I've been on, I've spent thousands of dollars on supplements and medications I've done and tried everything they've said. I have multiple autoimmune diseases. I have done it. I eat healthy. Um, I've lost about 70 pounds over the last four years, but for the last two years, I haven't, wow. been, I haven't been able to lose any weight at all besides, you know, yo-yoing between four or five pounds. But, and over the last few months, I've gained about probably 15 to 20 pounds. Um, I had surgery several months ago, two surgeries back to back, but I'm just, you know, what am I doing wrong or what is going on with me that I cannot make it move because I eat, you know, very, very healthy. I move daily. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've reduced the amount of food I've eaten and then I'll increase it. You know, nothing seems to make it help. Nothing changes. And I eat, I have a treat meal about once a, once a week, yeah. um, and like a dessert, but I don't do that during the week. So I'm just wondering what I'm doing wrong or what I need to change. And like all the money that I have to spend on supplements, but they're like, try this, try that, try this, try that. And I still have the same symptoms all the time. And that never changes. Well, I kind of and they're like, do you feel better? And I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> like, I still feel the same. So I wonder, you know, if you do, do you feel like you have some leaky gut that could be preventing absorption of capsules or anything like that? Oh, yeah. I've had hair tests too. I haven't had like the epigenic. Um, there's a holistic practitioner I've seen a couple of times over the last few years. And she's done a couple of hair scans on me and I'll come back that I'm missing some B vitamins. And then there's some other ones. And then we found out I had parasites. I did a cell core parasite cleanse um, okay. over about a course of a year. Um, and then I had to have surgery. So I kind of stopped that for a while. So I've, I've, I feel like I've done a lot, <laughs> but nothing ever changes. You know, I've go to sound bath and breath work classes. And like I said, everything just kind of stays the same. Yeah, so, you're doing, I feel like you're doing all the things. Do yeah, you I don't know if I'm just so stubborn. I just can't you know, my body's like, no, you're going to stay right where you're at. And, you know, mm -mm. no, no, no. There's something being missed. You don't have any root canals, right? No, I do not. I've never had a root Excellent. canal. Excellent. I do still have some metal um, fillings that I've had from a child, but most of them are the, the newer white ones, but I still have a couple of those in my mouth. But besides that, I've never had a root canal or crowns or anything like that done. Lots of trauma in your life. Um, I had some crazy, I have two kids. I have one kid that's on the spectrum. Um, he is high functioning. He's 20 now. And then I have a daughter that's before him about 28 months older than him. And she was a very hard kid growing up. She's 22 now. Um, so I'm, yeah, I mean, I guess you can say that. And I've had niece and nephew live with me that had parents that passed away and just kind of a rough marriage here and there through the years, just all kinds of things through the years. Life. Life, doesn't yes. doesn't mean it's happening right now, but 
yes, I guess so. years. So you said something yeah. important to me. You said you had a kid on the spectrum, which, which lets me know you probably have some, some genetic um, mutation. I don't want to call them mutations, but yeah, variant. Rocky, no, sorry guys. So, um, so that would be surprising to me if you didn't have genetic Rocky, no, some genetic variants like MTHFR or COMT that's slow. I bet you're a slow oxidant. So you can probably look at food and gain weight. There must be some other thing for you guys. They're going crazy. What did you say? Gain food, look at food and gain weight? Yes. That's exactly how I've been feeling the last few months is like, literally I'm looking at stuff and I'm not even partaking in things that like the rest of the family is. And it's just, it's driving me nuts. It's, it like, would drive me crazy. It's not fair. I know. So like really when that happens, it's usually, did you remineralize when you got your hair test? Did you have a calcium shell? Did you re, did you do all that? Um, I don't remember her remineralizing. I got whatever she told me to get. Like I got B vitamin powder and I had some CT minerals that I think Cellcor, I think it was Cellcor brand. Um, mm -hmm. And I put drops in my water. So I did those. Um, she didn't so feel any I've different. done so many things with all the the two practitioners, that hair analysis person. You know, I'm just like, you know, what what's accurate, what's not? Should I stop getting here's, here? You know, here, here's the thing that's different about this one. Oh shoot, I'm gonna take my blur off here, you guys. You guys are gonna see all my messy background. That's okay. <laughs> Whatever. Hold on. I can figure out how to do this. We all have messy. There we back. go. You guys see my <laughs> hyperbaric oxygen chamber back there? Yeah. Okay. So on Kyla Minerals, this is why they're different, the Divine E. So do you guys see the percentage there of all the minerals? Do you see how high those are? There's all the different minerals. You guys see the percentage of them. The mm -hmm. recommended daily lots are like 8,000 more on some of these. And so that is the difference that it made for me. I have done Quinton Minerals. I have done Trace Minerals. I have done all that stuff. And because... Because of the high dose of these, this is five capsules a day. And you start off with two with food because copper and boron can make you nauseous. Okay. You work your way up to five. And it has high doses of iodine and selenium. So I like to say that with people with Hashimoto's, people get scared of iodine. Usually when you take selenium with it, it's usually not a problem because selenium tempers the oxidation within the thyroid gland from iodine. Okay. But I like to say that disclaimer for people just in case. Um, okay. For me, they made all the difference in the world, whereas other minerals did not. Okay. Um, so, so that's the thing is if you have a calcium shell, they have to fix that before that and no other protocol will stick until we do that. The other thing yeah, it's is like nothing has stuck at all. Like, like yeah. I said, I've spent probably thousands on supplements this last time. She's like, has anything changed? You know? And I was like, the only thing that's changed from the last set of supplements she put me on is I was able to go to the bathroom more besides that. Oh. That's you know, good. everything's the same. I was, you know, I was um, diagnosed with Hashimoto's two years ago, but before that, I just was told I had hypothyroidism, you know, hypothyroidism for 20 years since my, the birth of my second child. So, <laughs> and I well, seem to get a new, a new um, autoimmune, like every other year, it seems like the last. So that's probably. the nervous system. That's definitely nervous system, but you've got a couple things that are kind of making you a little more hospitable to these things. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a lack of B vitamins and minerals. It's also that you probably have some genetic mutations because your son ended up on the spectrum. That lets me know that you put, might have something. And so the B vitamins are going to be more important for you. Magnesium is going to be really important for you. Um, you know, if you have a parasite, you have metal fillings in your mouth, those type of things kind of start to add up in the toxin bucket, right? They're not okay. that big a deal, but they will start to add up. And then if you're a slow oxidizer, or a detoxifier, that adds to it too. It's like a multitude of things all piled in one. And mm -hmm. so if we can get you to calm down, like, do you sleep well at night? No, the I last two so. or three years, it's been horrible. Yeah. I toss and turn all night long. I wake up and yawn most of the morning. So you need this Bor boron will make you sleep boron and then something and like, i take magnesium at night too so perfect. yeah you can <laughs> stop still, that when you get this because it has I've magnesium still got in the it. interrupted sleep all night long for the last two to three years it's, it's your nervous system so for sure and then possibly parasites could be involved in that but like why are they why are they staying in your body even after a cleanse it's something's making them hospital hospitable and it's things like not being able to detox well stress um having some mutations that are turned on um, and then, you know, possibly parasite metal feelings, just all that starts to add up. 
And so, I had that practitioner test me for the MA, MTHFR mm -hmm. uh, mutation. And when I got the results about three weeks ago, she said she didn't think that I had it because my number was right at the edge. I think it was right at eight. Um, so she wasn't mm -hmm. sure if I had it or not, but my, my oldest daughter tested positive for it. Right. Um, right. So, yeah. So, so yeah, you know, that's what I would do. I'd make sure I'm walking, you know, 10 to 12,000 steps a day. Okay. That you're, you're drink, getting enough protein, get 30 grams of protein in the morning. Make sure you're on a good B vitamin supplement. If you get the chyla minerals that has B vitamins and magnesium in it, so you don't have to take them, but start okay. slow. Um, nano glute B is another option for you, but I don't think you need it. Um, okay. And then I would really look into um, any sort of sleep that is broken and interrupted. If if this doesn't fix it, that's what we need to work on first is your sleep okay. relaxation. Okay. And then I took GLP-1, you know, I took that probably, I don't know, six months ago. I took it for four or five months. I did not lose. I think I lost two pounds the whole time. Is that mm -hmm. normal? <laughs> you know, for anybody, my huh. daughter wanted, wanted to put me on it just to help with inflammation and some other stuff, but she's like, you'll lose some weight on it. But I didn't. That's interesting. Yeah. That's really, how much were you on? Um, I got up, I started at 0.25 milligrams and got up to 2.0, which would have been 20 units because I ended up getting a compound of semaglutide with B vitamins in it. Wow. So it was the max dose. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah, there's something else going on in your body then for sure. And, you know, that's the thing. If you lack minerals, you know, B vitamins, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like yeah. If you regulate your blood sugars. Yeah. Because you have to have those for phase one and phase two liver detox. So okay. that's what I would look into. That's where I would start, my dear. Okay, awesome. Thank you okay. so, so much. You're welcome, Kelly. All right, guys. I think that is it for questions. I don't see anyone else's hand raised right now. And it's 530. But I did want to say to you guys that remember, um, as the last point here, you can join Wellness Plus for monthly open office hours. I do this uh, once a month with you guys. So if you're a Wellness Plus member, you get on here and ask me questions. I don't even do a spiel. You all guys get on and just ask me Q&A for the whole hour, hour and a half, two hours. I answer every single person's question with their hand up regardless of time when it's a Wellness Plus thing. Um, you guys have a code if you want, weight loss. It's all capital letters, weight loss. It's special for this masterclass just for you guys. It gets you $20 off your first month of Wellness Plus plus a free course credit. I have a three, wait, two hour course on there called How to Read Blood Work. And I go over every single blood work panel that you guys could possibly imagine and teach you how to read it. So if I were you and you're looking for inflammation, I would use my free course credit to go and read How to Read Your Blood Work. Um, and you get $20 off if you join wellness plus, plus a free course. Um, so I hope you, you guys love that. I know Deb put it in the chat. If you need to read it again, just scroll up in the chat. It's right there. Um, but I am recording this. We are going to put this up on YouTube, um, under Dr. Justin, uh, Dr. Justin MD. And so if you guys want to refer to your friends and family, please do this. I am occasionally going to have these um, master classes for you guys. So let me know how you liked it, what you'd like to hear, and I'll do it for you for you guys again. Thank you for joining. I hope this was helpful and a good use of your time on a Saturday and you got something out of it. And I love each and every one of you. You're all beautiful and beautiful souls. And I hope that you have a wonderful evening. You get to the root cause of everything you're looking for. Okay, bless the, all of you for coming. Thank you so much for everything. Thanks, guys. How sweet. Yeah, you guys have a great evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.